Hello, I'm Irina Behrend, the founder and director of the Musical Odyssey, a concert series for children and families in Half Moon Bay, California. Since all live performances are suspended in our area, we decided to take our program online, and we are thrilled to hear that our audiences are finding us here. If you would like to be notified about the upcoming videos, please subscribe to our channel. Today's program is prepared for you by our musicologist and the art historian, Yulia Garamova, San Francisco Symphony violinist, Diva Chernyavsky, and myself at the piano. Back in the 17th century, there is a lift and composed the violinist Heinrich Ignaz Franz Bieber. Take a look at what he was like. In this portrait, Heinrich Bieber is 37 years old. According to the fashion of the time, we're talking about the Baroque era, he has a wig on his head, he's wearing a red dress, it is a Kapellmeister's dress, or as we would call it today, a conductor's dress. On Bieber's chest, you can see a lace jabot, a special decorative lace accessory falling from the throat, and a medallion. The medallion was a present from the Emperor Leopold I, as Heinrich Bieber was one of the finest violin virtuosos of his time. Bieber was born in Bohemia. Today, it is Czech Republic, a country in Europe. In addition to being a virtuoso violinist, he was a brilliant organist. However, he's more known for the wonderful music he composed for the violin. Today we are going to listen to his sonata representativa. Interesting title, isn't it? First of all, what is sonata? Sonata comes from the Latin word sonare, which means to sound. Please note, to sound is not the same as to sing. This simply means that sonatas in the 17th century were musical pieces written for instruments and not for voice. Henrik Bieber composed his sonata for violin accompanied by a keyboard instrument. In our case, this will be grand piano. Now the second part of the title, representativa. So, who is going to represent what? David, could you please play one of your favorite parts? Did we just hear a cat? Yes, of course it was a cat. What do you think is this one? Bieber copied the quail call very precisely. How about this one? It's a hen? Yes, you are absolutely right. Bra it's a hen. Bravo, bravo. Thank you, David. Now we can answer the question about the title. This sonata represents different animal sounds. Don't you think that Heinrich Bieber had a great sense of humor? The violin part in this sonata is rather tricky, but what about the accompaniment? Irina, your music looks rather unusual. It has very few notes and a bunch of numbers. What is a strange code? This is indeed a code. Uh, the notes on the page make up the bass line and the numbers above it um, make up the intervals that you're supposed to play above the notes. This was the traditional way of notating the accompaniment. And uh, musicians of the time were well trained in harmony and composition and improvisation. So it was expected that a harpsichordist would not only decipher the code, but also embellish it with all sorts of passages and different ornaments. Now I have to confess, because I'm not that well trained in figured bass, I had to write out my part completely. David, every musical period has its special features. Today you will be playing music from the Baroque era. Do you have any secrets that would make your violin 
sounds closer to the style of the 17th century. Yes, of course. The modern instruments are quite different from the Baroque era instruments. One of the main differences is the bow. The modern bow is longer and heavier and it produces bigger sound to fill larger performance spaces. The Baroque bow is shorter, lighter, with elongated tip. It makes softer and more elegant sound that matches the style of the Baroque music. Let's listen to Sonata Representativa performed by David Chernyavsky on the violin and Irina Berend at the piano. See if you can recognize every animal. Mm -hmm. 